Hello and greetings. This video is a Game Master's Guide of Episode 9, of the Traveler Campaign, Secrets of the Ancients. This video is the 10th video, in a series of 11 videos. I would recommend watching the first 9 videos, before this one. Welcome to the RPG Mods Fan Spaceship. I am Peaches, and I will be your guide through the 9th episode slash adventure, which is titled, The Dark Gate, of the Traveler, Secrets of the Ancients Campaign. As a reminder, in the Traveler RPG system, the Game Master is called the Referee. However, I will refer to them as the Game Master, instead. I think the Dark Gate is the best adventure, in the whole Secrets of the Ancients campaign book. It is sandbox in nature, and has everything a player of Traveler would crave. I will now discuss the episode slash adventure itself, and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are a game master who will be running this adventure for their players, or are a player who already played through this adventure, and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. Captain. I brought our spaceship to the oceanic garden world of Zoe. We are now in a stable orbit around the planet. A group of travelers came to this planet, abandoned their spacecraft, and plunged into the planet's largest and deepest ocean. I will now give you the background and details of their adventure. Previously on Secrets of the Ancients, the characters escaped the Geish, an imperial prison ship, in the Pixie system. They obtained clues about the location of Seven's secret stronghold, and are heading towards the youth subsector, which is in Varga-controlled space. The Dark Gate is the ninth adventure-slash-episode, in the Secrets of the Ancients campaign. The adventure's synopsis would be as follows. In their commandeered scout ship, the travelers explore the youth subsector, trying to find Seven's secret base. Under the oceans of Zoe, they find the Dark Gate, that leads to Seven's family archive and realm. I would summarize the adventure as follows. Grandfather's host has dreams of a garden world, in youth, a subsector of the Gverdon sector, where Seven's secret base and family archive is located. In their newly appropriated scout ship, the travelers go to Pixie, where Grandfather has a secret cache of ancient personal weapons and armor. They then travel to the youth subsector, braving the threat of the Varga, and scanning garden worlds, in order to find Seven's secret base. The youth subsector has pirate-haunted systems, that are close to the imperial border. As they traverse the subsector, the travelers are intercepted by Varga forces, belonging to the 40th Squadron, who force them to travel to the fleet's base at Dexuzathuku. There, the travelers meet a Varga prince, Ethgors. He attempts to detain the travelers as his guests. As the travelers search ancient records, they uncover the truth behind the Varga myths. While at Ethgor's palace, the travelers are targeted by Seven's assassins, who are wielding ancient weaponry. After defeating Seven's agents, the travelers must persuade Ethgor's to aid them. His scouts can identify the world the travelers seek. It is Zoe, a world that is four parsecs core ward of Dexuzathuku. At Zoe, under its oceans, the travelers find the Dark Gate, a portal that leads to Seven's realm, which is at the planet's very core. I will now discuss the important non-player characters in the adventure. Most of these NPCs operate in the background of this adventure. Although the ancient Droin, Grandfather Yaskoidre, has perished, he has backed up his memories into one of the travelers. During the events of the previous episode, these memories have become active. At this stage of the campaign, Grandfather is capable of taking control of his host's body, whenever he wishes. At the same time, the host character can summon Grandfather. However, the Game Master should explain to the host player, that calling upon Grandfather comes at a cost. The character will permanently lose one endurance point, each time Grandfather is summoned. For whatever reason, if the host character is in imminent danger of perishing, Grandfather has the ability to psionically transfer his mind to another host. Since Grandfather has extraordinary psionic, intellect, science and engineering skills and abilities, the Game Master can also have Grandfather manifest as a deus ex machina, if circumstances warrant. Seven is one of Grandfather's errant children, and is the main antagonist of the campaign. 
Seven is now trapped in Grandfather's collapsing pocket universe. However, Seven has a family archive in another location, back in the normal universe, where his backup will be activated upon his death in the collapsing pocket universe. Destroying Seven's family archive is now the player character's primary goal. The portal to Seven's family archive is located 11 kilometers below the surface of planet Zoe's largest ocean. The 40th Squadron is one of the best organized Varga bands in Gverdon Sector. They are descended from a squadron of Varga warships that survived the First Frontier War. The squadron now controls a loose alliance of a half dozen systems in the youth subsector. Ethgors is the leader of the Dexuzathuku system. Like any other leader in the 40th Squadron, he rose through the ranks by being a masterful commander, tactician, and blooded in a thousand silent engagements amid the stars. He does not hold a high regard to the Church of the Chosen Ones, but he wants to know why the Church has such a keen interest in the Travelers. The Church of the Chosen Ones is a Varga religious sect, who believes the Varga are the chosen heirs of the Ancients, and are therefore the rightful rulers of the galaxy. Ethgore's palace is half pirate's den and half naval college. Navor is a Varga priest of the Church of the Chosen Ones. He is over 300,000 years old, and is also an agent of Seven. He knows of Seven's predicament in Grandfather's collapsing pocket universe. Hence, he wants to capture the travelers, interrogate them, and, ultimately, execute them. The Church of the Chosen Ones was established by Seven, in order to gain leverage in Varga society. Captain Rucko takes orders from Ethgors. She is in charge of a pair of Varga frigates, accompanied by a 600-ton Corsair-class ship. She, as well as others, are searching for the travelers. Her ships vastly outclass, outgun, and outmaneuver the traveler's ship. The traveler's ship can encounter her fleet when they enter the 40th Squadron's territory, or when the game master needs to move the story to Dexuzathuku. Alternatively, in the situation where the traveler's ship is in danger of being destroyed by pirates, regardless of where they are, Captain Rurko's fleet can show up and save them. Rurko is utterly professional and runs her ships and crew with strict naval discipline. Rurko is also a devotee of the Church of the Chosen Ones. If the travelers mention about the ancients, she becomes intensely interested and demands to know more. I will now go through the adventure's timeline of events. My apologies, in advance. I will be repeating some things I have already mentioned before. The traveler hosting grandfather's memories has a dream of a garden world with shimmering oceans and green forests. Its atmosphere composition includes an unusually high amount of neon. Also in the system is a gas giant with three moons, one of which is a captured ice ball. On the garden world, the Varga are enslaving a minor race of amphibious sea slugs. The planet is located somewhere in the youth subsector, and hidden deep beneath its surface is a hidden fortress, which is Seven's family archive. This dream has already been experienced by the host character during the last episode. For some reason, it is repeated in this episode. The travelers search the Imperial Library data and find there are eight garden worlds in the youth subsector, but three of them can be eliminated from the list due to not having gas giants or not having moons that fit the ones described in the dream, which leaves five candidates for the travelers must consider. The next thing the travelers need to do is obtain a jump-capable ship. However, due to the events in the previous episode, again, they should have already accomplished this. In order for this episode to not be long and boring, the game master should provide the travelers with a jump-3 capable ship. The campaign book seems repetitive by covering scenarios in which the travelers can obtain a scout-class spaceship. The host character is psionically told by grandfather of a secret cache, hidden inside a shallow cave on a cliff face in the wilderness, located on Pixie. The travelers go to the cache and obtain various advanced ancient technology weapons, equipment and armor, including shimmer suits, which are very high-tech versions of vac suits, and one cylindrical shaped ancient artifact. This artifact is capable of exploding a star. After grabbing the contents of the cache and leaving Pixie, the traveler can set off for the youth subsector. 
Although Zoe will be the Traveler's ultimate destination, from their search of the Imperial Library data, the Travelers are supposed to suspect that Triad, Uthith, or Dexuzathuku are the most likely candidates. All are located within Varga territory, whereas Uthith and Dexuzathuku lies within the Varga's 40th Squadron's jurisdiction. The Travelers traverse both the Regina and Youth subsectors. As they traverse the subsectors, they can seek missions, with payment rewards, from a variety of patrons. The campaign book provides cursory details on encounters, patrons and missions, for many star systems, within the Regina and Youth subsectors. After all, the Travelers need a means for paying for fuel, as they are traversing the subsectors. I will now quickly mention each of these missions slash encounters. The Boogeen quest can turn out to be a heist slash pirate quest. The available mission on ferry is a heist quest. The Bexworld mission is a mining quest and is a dead end. The Kinorb mission is an escort quest. The Dentist mission is an info gathering quest. The Pandran mission is an investigation quest and is geared towards funneling the travelers to the Dexuzathuku system. There are no missions at the Gizersi system, but there is the potential for space combat. The Eurozu mission is an investigation quest. The Kate's mission is not a mission, per se. Instead, it is an escape quest. The Triad mission is an escort quest. The Augsdalzoerg mission is an investigation quest. The mission at the Forradcock system is an investigation quest. The mission at the Uthith system is an unlikely delivery quest. The Kuswazi mission is a dead-end quest. The Uralonganu mission is an escort-like quest. The Thivv mission is a heist-like quest. Dexuzathuku is a garden world. The Varga prince, Ethgors, rules over the world. Story and plot-wise, the travelers are meant to visit the Dexuzathuku system. Here, the travelers get caught up in the intrigues of the 40th Squadron. The next event occurs when the travelers first enter 40th Squadron's territory. But before I do so, let me give you some background and details on them. The 40th Squadron is one of the best organized Varga bands in Gverdon Sector. They are descended from a squadron of Varga warships that survived the First Frontier War, which was 500 years ago, and have established their own petty kingdom in the chaotic aftermath of the conflict. The squadron controls a loose alliance of a half-dozen systems. Individual planets have their own governments, but the squadron's naval officers are the real power in the petty kingdom. The Imperium always suspected bands of Varga are getting aid from the Jodani, including the 40th Squadron, because the squadron lacks an industrial base and the resources to maintain its full fleet without external help. The Imperium suspects the Jodani are propping up these bands in order to threaten the Imperium's flank. Actually, the squadron has been getting covert aid, not only from the Jodani, but also from Agents of Seven. During the events of the fourth episode of this campaign, the Travelers entered Grandfather's Pocket Universe. Before breaking into Grandfather's Pocket Universe, himself, Seven sent a message to all his agents to be on the watch for the Travelers in case they managed to escape the Pocket Universe. As the Travelers are jumping around the youth subsector, they will encounter a pair of Varga frigates, accompanied by a 600-ton Corsair-class ship. These three ships are operated by Agents of Seven. These ships also outclass the Traveler's ship, hence making, fighting back, or escaping impossible. The Game Master can run this event when the Travelers jump into 40th Squadron's territory, or when they want to forward the story to Dexuzathuku. These Varga pirate ships approach the Traveler's ship and hail them by name. The frigates are commanded by a silver-furred Varga named Captain Rurko. Captain Rurko is the one who hails the Travelers. She says, I am Commander Rurko of the 40th. By order of Ethgors, you are to cut your engines and stand down. No harm will come to you if you cooperate fully. Assuming the Travelers cooperate, the Corsair ship scoops up the Traveler's ship and then jumps for Dexuzathuku. While traversing jump space, Captain Rurko, along with a Varga Marine squad, comes on board the Traveler's ship. Depending on how the Travelers behave, 
she will treat the travelers, either as prisoners, or as captive guests. The travelers will notice that unlike the other Varga they have encountered, Rurko and her crew are utterly professional and disciplined. Rurko is a devotee of the Varga religion, known as the Church of the Chosen Ones. This sect believes that the Varga were chosen by the long-vanished ancients to be their successors. If the travelers mention the ancients, she becomes intensely interested and demands to know more. Grandfather will not reveal himself in this scene, because he suspects that Seven established the Church of the Chosen Ones in order to gain leverage in Varga society. Dexuzathuku is a world of forests and savannas. Hovering over the planet Starport is a huge floating grave platform, suspended halfway between the ground and the sky. This is the palace of Ethgors, a prince of the Varga. If the travelers came here independently, then they are spotted by Ethgors agents at the Starport, and are invited to meet with the prince. If they were brought here by Captain Rurko, then she personally escorts them to meet with Ethgors. Ethgors palace is half pirate's den, and half naval college. As the travelers are escorted to Ethgore, they will see looted treasure, Varga curled around strange hookahs, and food-filled banquet tables. With its stone floors and wooden furnishings, the place resembles more of a low-tech primitive barbarian hall. Once in the throne room, they see a holographic display of the neighboring star systems. Dozens and dozens of symbols glimmer, denoting the location of Varga, Imperial, and Jodani ships, each tagged with a glyph, marking how old that data is. Ethgors welcomes the travelers to sit and eat. The Church of the Chosen Ones have a keen interest in the travelers, and Ekthor wants to know why. If the travelers are deceptive, he will turn them over to the priests of the Chosen Ones. If the travelers are cordial, truthful, and have gained his trust, Ethgors will reveal that Zoe is the garden world the travelers seek. Once Ethgors reveals the location of Zoe, white-robed Varga priests of the Chosen Ones arrive in the throne room. The priests wish the travelers to accompany them to the Temple of the Chosen Ones. Hopefully, the travelers are smart enough to realize that the priests' goal is to capture or execute them. Among the priests is Navur, a Varga agent of Seven, who has been alive for more than 300,000 years. A fire fight breaks out between the priests and the travelers. Navur focuses his fire on the traveler, who is grandfather's host. Escape is also an available option for the player characters. Due to attack, Ethgor's palace will be in chaos, and the travelers can easily reach and depart with their ship. As the travelers plot their course to Zoe, they will probably stop at Otsusu and Tinki Zakles. Along the way, Otsusu is a low-tech world, used as a supply base and hideout for pirates. On it is a deranged Varga prophet, named Zoerzthu, who points towards Zoe, calling it, the Fortress of the Ancients. Tinky Zakles is a garden world, protected by orbital defense satellites, and controlled by Varga Corsairs. Zoe is a forested world, with a high partial atmospheric pressure of neon. It has several thousand Varga, and several million semi-intelligent sea slugs, called the Rinkotropa. The Varga have enslaved the Rinkotropa to work in factories, producing low-tech bulk goods. After arriving on the planet Starport, the travelers will meet Songak, the Starport's brutish commander, and Cargo, a biologist, who is studying the Rinkotropa. The traveler's objective is to locate Seven's base. The adventure outlines a few means in which the player characters can accomplish this. The portal to Seven's realm and family archive is located 11 kilometers below the surface of the largest ocean of the planet. No spaceship the travelers manage to get can withstand the pressure at those depths. However, the shimmer suits that the travelers obtained from Grandfather's cache earlier in the adventure can protect them from such intense pressure. The travelers sink down and down, far beyond the reach of sunlight, into the lightless regions. Down past the continental shelf, across the abyssal plain and down further still. The adventure ends with the travelers plunging into the portal. For this adventure, the first edition of the sourcebook provides two maps. The first map provided is that of the youth subsector, which is in the Gverdon sector of charted space and is core ward of the spin ward marches. Via the internet, 
you can search for and find a color map of the subsector. However, just be aware that there were name changes for a few of the star systems. The other map is that of Ethgore's Palace. As mentioned before, Ethgore's Palace is half Pirate's Den and half Naval College. To me, I think this is the best adventure in the Secrets of the Ancients campaign book. It is sandbox in nature, and, unlike the previous adventures, it is not railroady. It has everything a player of Traveller would crave. It has space exploration. It has space combat. It has ground combat. And, it has role-playing. Because of its sandbox nature, the Game Master can add one, or two, side adventures into this adventure, as well. If you have any ideas on how to make this adventure even better, please share them in the comments below. Next week, I will provide a walkthrough of the next and last episode, Grandfather Lies. Thank you for watching, from all of us, at the RPG Mods Fan Spaceship. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. We do like feedback, and we try to respond to as many comments as we can. Till next time, on behalf of RPG Mods Fan, I am Peaches, saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye. Boy!